Ladies and gentlemen, our distinguished guest, I am Lila Ketchkesh. I'm going to be the presenter today. Let me announce that today is the National Day of the United Kingdom on the stage of the International Pavilion. The original idea of the organizers of the World Conservation Forum was to provide a framework for an array of sessions focusing on conservation, sustainability, hunting and wildlife management, and human responsibility. Yet, there was a general supposition that foreign exhibitors should also introduce themselves in the relation of the topics above and show us their relevant local policies, their national particularities. Today is the fourth in a row, following Slovenia, Poland and Turkey. I have the honor to introduce the first presenter of the representatives of the Robert Smith Surtees Society from the United Kingdom, Captain Edward Swales. Captain Swales is a lifelong fox hunter who lives and hunts in the border country between England and Scotland. Their hunting with hounds, conservation and shooting on grouse, moors and pheasant shoots all coexist. After a career in the British Army where he became expert in jungle warfare, he has devoted his time to observing and encouraging the positive collaboration of hunting organizations for the benefit of the local fauna and community. Today, he is going to talk about the conservation and hunting in the UK. Hello, can you hear me? Junaport Kivanoch. That's the end of my Hungarian. I hope you can understand English. And we'll start off with a huge thank you to everybody here and the organizers particularly for producing something which I don't think we could produce at the moment in the United Kingdom. Because what you're looking at with the guest of speakers here is a, a persecuted minority of effectively people who partake in what is viewed as a criminal activity. So I can see that here in Hungary, you are making enormous steps and very, very effective steps from what I hear from the minister to make sure that the salami process of giving up one of your traditions or rights after another after another results very quickly in a situation from which you can't come back. So this, really, sitting here in Budapest, I look at this and I think this is liberty. What you have here is liberty because you have the freedom to express your views in terms of field sports, hunting, shooting, whatever it might be, freely. We would not be able to do this in England. And if we did do this in England, we would have hundreds of thousands of people spectating, but they wouldn't all be our friends. They would probably be the opposite. So I think you've done a fantastic job in producing this exhibition. Just to give you an idea, excuse the photograph, just to give you an idea of where we are in the United Kingdom, in England, fox hunting with hounds has been made illegal, has been banned since 2004. In Scotland, since 2002, Hunting has been restricted enormously so that you can only use hounds or dogs to flush foxes to be shot by guns. And very recently this year in Northern Ireland, on, uh, at Christmas this year, a bill was proposed in Northern Ireland to outright ban any form of fox hunting or hunting with dogs, and even going further than that, to ban trail hunting, which is the following on a horse of an artificial scent to replicate fox hunting. So you can see that as we stand at the minute, fox hunting and traditional hunting in the United Kingdom is very much under threat. And we are not united in our voice with people that shoot and fish and take part in rural life. We are fairly isolated in our cause. One of the reasons for that is that we feel our leadership does not have a strategy that actively communicates with the public of Great Britain or England 
to justify what we see as our cultural heritage and our minority right and our civil liberty. And that is before I even start talking about animal welfare or the rights or wrongs of fox hunting. So our PR, our marketing is not very good. The enemy against us, their PR and marketing is exceptionally good. And unfortunately, our politicians are listening to the opposition far more clearly than we are. I started fox hunting or being interested in fox hunting when I was about nine years old. And my grandfather had hunted or had ridden to hounds in Northumberland, where I live, on the Scottish border. Um, I was very interested in, in the nature of foxes. So I spent all my time out in the morning before school looking for foxes, being interested in their habits, their livelihood, what they did. And it was only about two years later when I decided that, uh, or when I saw hunting, saw a pack of foxhounds come to the village where I live, and I followed them. And for some reason, I didn't feel uh, that the imminent death, possibly, of the fox was anything to me that was anything other than just natural. And that's something I've continued to think of throughout the whole of my life. So I went out on a bicycle, and I used to follow the, the hounds on a bicycle. And you have to be very efficient when you're on a bicycle because you have to cycle a long way. So you have to work out where the fox is going, where the hounds are going, where the huntsman's going, and then you make your decision. I'm going to cycle on my bike left, and you cycle for two miles. And there at the end of it, the prize, the reward, is you see the fox, and you see the hounds, and you see the huntsman, and you suddenly think after a year or two of doing that that you have an idea what fox hunting is about. But it's, it's pretty complicated. So I take part in fox hunting, riding on, riding on a horse after foxes with, with 30 hounds, let's say. Um, but today, because it is illegal, we just are essentially given the only option, which is to pretend that we're hunting foxes and to follow a trail, which is what we do. And we try and stay within the law. Also involved a little bit in hunting crows, which are black birds, with falcons. And that, again, is on horseback, which, again, is, is, is quite interesting. What is for sure is that any ban on fox hunting has got absolutely nothing to do with animal welfare. And the reason that I say that is since 2004, the fox population in England has reduced by somewhere between 40% and 60% because they have stopped fox hunting. And the reason for that is that once the value of an animal like a fox, which was being managed successfully using hounds and using fox hunting, once that is removed, then you open the door for anybody, whether they're interested in shooting or conservation for game birds, partridges, grouse, pheasants, whatever. You open the door there with no regulation, no numbers, and before you know it, 50% of your foxes have been killed from 2004. So in England, unlike Hungary, we live in a very managed country. Every, every acre, every piece of ground, is very, very managed because we're a small island with a large population. And about 17% of our population is rural. So that's a pretty small minority. Coupled with that, you have the interested people in rewilding with the idea that releasing uh, or, or allowing a piece of ground just to go back to the, the hands of nature uh, is a good thing. Well, in England, and certainly the rest of Great Britain, we do not have the space for a huge amount of unmanaged countryside because it's quite valuable to us. So we manage it, and we manage it for shooting a lot of the time. And one of the things about that is that if you were to look 15, 20 years ago at a register of how many birds were shot in one day, you would probably find that there might be 100 pheasants were shot. Now you're looking a lot of the time at big commercial shooting operations where the numbers are 500, let's say, and people pay a lot of money to shoot those 500 birds. So because of that, the over-management of foxes by shooting has to happen to allow that number of pheasants to survive. A huge amount of pheasants 
have to be put onto the ground in order to provide those numbers. And there are some questions, definitely, about the ecological imprint on a piece of land of putting down tens and tens of thousands of pheasants so that you can shoot 500 in a day. And I think the balance, which is what it's all about, has just got out of hand. I'm convinced, as are all of my colleagues, passionately, that the control of foxes using foxhounds is an essential tool in conservation. And the reason for that is that it is the only natural way of controlling foxes, apart from using an eagle in Kazakhstan, which I think is the only other animal that can take a fox other than the wolf, and probably several others I haven't thought about, but never mind. And so the reason for that is that the foxes that we think are the problem, the sick foxes, the old foxes, the ones that have disease, are the ones that are more likely to go for an easy dinner, an easy meal. So they're the ones that take the lambs, the young sheep, they're the ones that take the hens and chickens in people's farms. And a pack of foxhounds will be likely to catch those standard of animal, that standard of animal. A fit fox is very unlikely to get caught by a pack of hounds. And so that maintains quite a nice balance. And one could argue that fox hunting with hounds is actually very beneficial to the selection and maintenance of a healthy fox population genetically. I would think it is. But if we let this go, if we don't fight, if we don't stand up, and if we don't get our messaging right and get that sorted out politically and with the majority of people in Britain to think that hunting is OK, as you have done here, look at it. This, this exhibition is full of children. This has had tens of thousands of people coming to it. At home, as I said before, this would be impossible. And the reason for that is that nobody would ensure the event. Nobody would sponsor the event because of the, the messaging that fox hunting is OK is, is terrible. We, we've done a really, really poor job in convincing people that what we do is part of our life and it's part of rural life. It's part of the rural community. So if you let hunting go, as some people have to some degree, then the next thing quite obviously is shooting. And then quite off, after that, it might be fishing, but it would probably involve greyhound racing, horse racing, and then you're into questions about farm animals. Is it okay to keep chickens, hens, sheep, cows? Where, where do you draw the line? And I think the line needs to be drawn. Already we've gone far enough, and we do not need to concede any more ground. What has been great here is to see organizations like the Hungarian CIC and collaboration with them from our, on our behalf as a British uh, representative or representation for fox hunting is I think a good step because it shows people outside of England and outside of Britain that hunting's okay. It's part of life. It's part of rural life. It's part of a holistic managed countryside way of life. And it's, it's a very sensible and practical thing to do. On closing, I'd just like to say one story is that this funny photograph is me having finished a 200 kilometer horse ride along the border with Scotland. And it was for political reasons. It's when Scotland tried to have a, a referendum on independence in 2014. So me and four friends spent eight days riding 200, K, 200 kilometers uh, along the border. And, and along the way of doing that ride, I carried this whip for hunting, and that whip had belonged to my grandfather who had carried that whip the whole way through five years of the First World War in France and Belgium. He gave it to my father, he hunted with it, he gave it to me, I hunted with it, and I really want to make sure that I hand that whip over to my children who do hunt when they're older and keep this going. So we don't want to let this, this wonderful tradition of ours and this wonderful way of life of ours uh, discontinue. I think that's probably enough on the conservation of a fox. I think you have hopefully got the idea as far as we see it. And I'm going to finish and again say thank you very much for hosting this wonderful exhibition. You've encouraged us and boosted the morale of at least six people in England who think that fox hunting maybe is not dead. Kosonom.